So I recently bought myself a mini lathe off eBay for about 80 Australian dollars and it's come in the mail today so I thought I'd give a review of it because nobody else has. Now I bought this mainly for the purpose of turning instrument tuning pegs and I'm not sure how easy to see it is but the shaft has a slight taper and it needs to be perfectly round or they won't work very well. This particular one was carved by hand, and you can probably see just by looking at it that it's a very slow process. A lathe is pretty much essential if you want to make a lot of these, and I do tend to make a lot. So instead of building my own lathe, I thought this would be the next cheapest option. As far as I can tell, the main downside is it's really small, but for anything small like tuning pegs, well, not an issue. So this is all the stuff that it comes with in the box. We've got the power cable as well as an adapter for an Australian 3-pin plug which is nice because I thought I'd have to buy my own. You get a tiny little chisel with it which it looks like a very well made tool but it's pretty small. Two Allen keys. This one's for adjusting the stock which simply slides in this aluminium tray and of course for adjusting the little tool rest that slides side to side and in and out. The height's fixed because presumably your chisel is always going to be at the same level. The one issue with this is the tool rest is very short Let's see, 45mm, but obviously that's just a bit of aluminium angle. You could quite easily make a wider one, which I'll probably do, because even for this tuning peg, if I'm turning the whole length, it's too short. Now if you are considering buying one of these, it's important to note that there are three different models. At a glance they all look exactly the same, but as far as I can tell, where this one differs is it's the only one that has this type of headstock, the spiky thing. The others have this kind of flimsy looking screw-in piece, which is only about 3-4mm mm, in diameter. It would be good for turning small stuff, but for anything bigger I don't think it would be very good. Uh, it comes with an instruction manual for all the good it does, if you can read Mandarin, so that's not much use. So I think what I'll do is turn something on it. This is going to be the first time I've ever used this thing, so it will be a very honest review indeed. I've started with just this little blank of 16mm wide hardwood. I've already drilled out the end with a, what do you call it? It's meant specifically for drilling out the tail stock. There's already one of them in place here. It has the cuts suggesting that it can work as a drill bit, but I'm not really sure how you'd do that, so I just did it with another drill bit. Another couple of things I should have pointed out. The speed control is actually on the transformer can barely see that from here but it's just a little click switch that has seven different positions so if you're wondering why there's no speed adjustment dial or anything on the lathe itself that's why um, we'll see what the maximum working length is that's about 155 mil those bolts could maybe go out a little bit more Let's take it up to 160 but pretty limited. If you really had to, you could probably take this out of the slide and somehow mount it further away. Obviously then you'll have to clamp this and the tail stock down pretty securely. But I don't think I'll be needing to do that. Okay, so I've drilled a 2.8mm hole to guide that central spike. I'm using a soft face hammer because while I at least hope that this 
headstock is tool grade steel, hitting it with a steel hammer eventually is going to start damaging it. Yeah. I have no idea how deep this is meant to be embedded. Maybe the people who actually do wood turning can help me with this, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Though I have done some wood turning on a homemade lathe, and I've survived to tell the tale, so this should be somewhat safer. I'm guessing I tighten that down nicely. Cutest, most adorable little key chuck. Another funny thing. I've got these rubber feet, but for some reason they're sort of in the middle. Don't know why they wouldn't have them right at the edge. If it's a problem, I'll just clamp it to the bench. Okay, that looks pretty nice. So the me method for adjusting the tail stock is pretty crude. But it's pretty quick, so I don't mind. Hmm. Don't know how well you can hear that, but it's fairly quiet. Well, that all works fine. I think I'm just going to leave it right in the middle because it's a somewhat larger diameter piece of hardwood. For those wondering, yes, I will be using safety glasses. Not that bad. The lathe is moving, so I'm going to have to clamp it to the bench. Now that it's clamped down, let's have another go at that. And then, again, you wood turning folk would probably know better. This is obviously just a regular chisel, and I don't even know how to hold it, so... Yes. So here's what's happened. It's loosened off a little bit. Perhaps the tail stock dug in a bit further and started to spin. So it's not the fault of the lathe, it's the fault of the operator, of course. As I said, this would be a very honest review. Well, that's looking a bit more promising slow going, but it's getting there, all nice and smooth, doesn't feel like it's loosened off, but maybe that'll come in time. It's definitely turned out better than my homemade lathe. See, nice and smooth. That's just with a chisel, I haven't done any sanding or any of that yet. This will become the barrel for my MagArm 3 submachine gun. So, look forward to that one. So I'll be using the little baby chisel they gave me. What I'm trying to do here is have a short barrel with a sort of finned look to it. And I'm very happy with it so far. It's definitely a lot better than putting a piece of dowel in a drill and spinning it. Big improvement. Let's see if I can get some close up.
pretty nice, huh? Not bad for a first timer and an eighty dollar lathe, huh? Mmm, very crisp. That's very nice. <sighs> now the thing I'd like to do is just put a slight bevel on the corners. So again, that's a problem of such a tiny tool rest that I always have to move it. Though I suppose the reason they did that is because if this was very long, you wouldn't get the tail stock close to the head stock. So this will give you a better look at it. That just comes right out. This time it's nice and secure, it hasn't slipped or anything. So it's done its job quite well. Here's the little piece that I've turned. That's probably the nicest rubber band gun barrel I've done. Definitely couldn't have done this with my homemade lathe. But I mean, if you look at it, you can probably see why. Last thing I need to do is drill out this, which normally on a lathe you could do, but of course, because it's pinned in place, um, you can't turn that without a tail stock because it would just fall straight off. But otherwise, I think it was a pretty good investment. I mean, you won't find a cheaper lathe on the internet, but if all you need to do is turn small things and you're not willing to spend $500 or so, this might be a good idea. I don't do much wood turning. It's, I only really turn tuning pegs and little things like this, bolt handles for bolt action rifles and so on. And for that, I think it does its job very well. I'm quite impressed. That said, I've always been a fan of cheap tools. I've got an Ozito drill press and power drill, and they've run very well. I've had the drill for, I don't know, five years or more. It's still going. You know, Ozito don't have the best reputation, and sometimes you can be unlucky, but I've been very lucky. And I hope it's the same for this lathe. So if it's still going strong in, I don't know, three months, six months, a year's time, I'll probably post it in the comments saying that it's going well. But from what I can tell so far, I would definitely recommend this product to, for someone who's doing a little bit of wood turning here and there, nothing big diameter, nothing too serious, but for someone who's on a tight budget and doesn't want to spend $500 for a tool that they really don't use that much. One more thing I'd like to re-stress, if that's even a word, is that ignore that stage when the motor appeared to be slipping. That was purely my fault. You can see how the headstock has slipped and started cutting a ring in there. All you have to do is just make sure the tail stock is all firmly clamped together and this is hammered in enough. You can see the size of those indentations. It should be, those indents should be about the same diameter as the centre one because clearly that's done the job. It was nice and stable after that.